All right, let's get this going again. Here I am, another Friday night. It's only, it's only 4 o'clock on Friday. It already feels like Friday night. Uh, but I'm at the office when everybody else has already left the office because, uh, once again, it seems like I'm being asked a question that I've had before and I've answered before. And whenever I get repetitive questions, I'm more and more frequently, I'm, I'm just making videos on them. And then when I get asked the question, I'll just say, go to this, this link, go watch this video. So I think what I'm going to do, the, the, the question is, hey, uh, tell me what's so great about Twin Falls. Why would I want to move there? And, and, it, and it sounds funny coming out that way because it sounds like somebody's saying, hey, prove to me why I, sh why I should move there, which kind of is what they're asking. But the whole reason they're asking is because they know something's telling them they should be moving here. And if they've watched any of my videos, I've already gone over what's so great about being here. I've, I've got a pros and cons set of videos on here, top 10, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, what Idaho uh, and Southern Idaho specifically is continuing to be a safe haven for people that want to do their own thing, don't want to be told what to do by the government, uh, freedoms, outdoor activities galore, uh, low cost, super low cost of living, uh, despite what the media tells you. And on and on and on. So, um, I, I, you know, the first thing I was going to do, and, and I'm still going to do it here. It's just going to take me a minute to do it while I'm while I'm talking to you. And uh, it's going to be. Are these just glaring? Those glaring like crazy. Um, let me open this up. So, the easiest thing for me to do is to say, "Hey, look." Let's share the screen. The easiest thing for me to do is say, hey, look, welcome to 2023, where any question you have can be answered on YouTube. And so if you go to YouTube here and put in Twin Falls, Idaho, here's all these people talking about Twin Falls and what's going on here and, and why we are who we are and all that stuff. And I would say, just go watch those videos. I don't need to answer the question for you. But if you know anything about advertising or social media, you know that uh, one way to get a lot of eyeballs on your content is by saying outrageous things. I mean, I think of Howard Stern, you know, the shock jock and all the crazy things people have done forever in advertising just to get eyeballs on the content, eyeballs on the thing you're selling. Look at my widget. Look at my snake oil. Uh, and as I look at these uh, uh, best of Twin Falls type things here, here's avoid Twin Falls, Idaho, unless you can handle this. Well, that that's clickbait. That's a clickbait title. It's to get your attention to go, oh no, I was thinking about moving to Twin Falls, but this says there's something I need to avoid. And it's all designed to get you to go watch their video. And the interesting thing is the this channel, which is, is you know probably a great channel and I'm sure they're great people. I don't know them at all. But if you backtrack their channel, they're up in Boise. They're two hours away. They're they're Meridian, Nampa, uh, Star, Eagle, nothing down here. So why are they down here? Why are they doing videos about down here? Well, it's because if they say, watch out for Twin Falls, then they can say, come on up here to Boise. Come buy houses in our area. And, and it, it, you know, there's other things to give some more content to write about or talk about or whatever, capture a bigger audience. Because I, I do find that, um, I mean, I get calls from all over the country People coming from California, Oregon, you know, everything on the West, uh, everything on the East, Texas, uh, Wyoming, uh, all over the place. And um, they're mostly coming here for the same reasons, which I stated at the beginning of the video. Um, but some people can't let go of the city life. Uh, I have lived in Phoenix. I lived in Phoenix for 20, 20 years, 20 out of the 21 years I was in Arizona. I went to Arizona State, right in the middle of it all. I lived it. Uh, Two-hour commute when you didn't have to go very far. It was just bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, all the smog, pollution, gang violence, crime, you name it. High cost of living um, and, and not so friendly neighbors, you know, for the most part, whatever. Um, and we are just the opposite here in Idaho. And, and you don't have to believe me. doesn't matter to me. You, you find out if you come here, move here, whatever. 
And so I digress. We're back to this video. Show me why it's so great here. Well, you, you can go on YouTube and you can find these videos that talk about the different things you can do here. And, I, and I've watched some of these and, and that there, there is a lot of things you can do around here. Um, but really, you know, go to my website, uh, real, um, realestatetwinfalls.com. And I believe it's under the about, let's see, where is it? I took my glass off. Under resources, under blog. I I used to blog for fun. And so um, it's easy for me to create content. Uh, and so here's all the posts under the blog. Uh, Discover the magic of Twin Falls with the Jeremy Orton group. That's mine. Um, uh, let's see. Here's my musings. I've got a couple more specifically just about what we're talking about. Um, the guide to exploring Twin Falls. Ask a Twin Falls realtor. That's me. And welcome to the Magic Valley. Things to do and see. That's me. So this video is is partially because I've already talked about these things. I've already written about these things. There's just no way to get it out to everybody unless I, they ask and then I send it to them. And so I'm going to go over a couple of things from a bird's eye view. This is going to be a little bit different than what I've done in the past. And the way I'm going to lay it out is just by a map. Because I haven't really done this in, in this manner per se. Uh, and I'm going to just going to have to put my glasses back on to see this stuff. Uh, what I've done in the past is I've said, we, we've got Craters of the Moon. Go check it out. Natsu Pa, go check it out. Three Hot Springs. Uh, uh, jackpot, you know, casinos aren't that far. And Pomerel Skiing and Sun Valley Skiing and Yellowstone. And I can talk about all these things, but what I haven't done is just shown you where they're all at. Okay. So here's where most people call about to ask about. So here's Boise, our capital up here on the left. Here's Pocatello over here on the right in Idaho Falls. So the big players in our area, Southern Idaho, is going to be Twin Falls. That's me down here with all these little trinkets on it. And if you're in Twin Falls, people like Twin Falls. And in particular, there's a, a gentleman coming in town this weekend that's asking me the same question. Twin Falls is kind of a central location to everything, which is one of the reasons I like it. Um, if I need a big shopping mall, I can go two hours to Boise and there's plenty of shopping, or I can go three hours to my south, just follow the 84 down here this way, and it'll take me straight to Salt Lake City, plenty of shopping. Um, if I if I want to spend a few more hours driving and go to like Yellowstone National Park, I can head up through Idaho Falls and head up that way. But Twin Falls is where we're at. And Twin Falls is a town of about, we're probably getting close to 80,000 people now. So, you know, depending on where you're from, that may be a lot, it may be a little, you know, compared to Phoenix, it's nothing. But um, where I'm living is in this little town to the left, to the west of, here's Twin Falls, I'm in Filer. Filer is a town of 2,600 people. We have uh, no stoplights, we have one grocery store, we have two gas stations. And if you want to eat something in town, we have a Pizza Hut and a Subway, and that's it. Uh, but Filer is a great place if you want to be just outside of Twin. It's got um, plenty of options. Uh, there's nothing to do. And, and if you're okay with that, it's a perfect place for that. But if you're the kind of person that has to have things to go do, which is a thing, uh, I've got some daughters that way. Uh, one of them lives in Boise now. She went to college up there and she's staying up there because there's lots of stuff to do. I guess, you know, I'm 52 years old. I lived in that. I did that. I guess maybe there's a time in your life and you want to do all that stuff. Not so much for me anymore. I would rather have some peace and quiet and do my own thing. So if you're interested in moving here, if you're looking for lots of stuff to do, don't come to Twin Falls because there's nothing to do here. I think we have we have one miniature golf place. We probably we have a couple of bowling alleys. Uh, we don't all the all the drive-in movie theaters, believe it or not, we had two of them. They're closed. Um, we have one theater. We don't really have them all. We have we have them all, but it's not really a mall. My kids say that's not really a mall, Dad. Um, and it's store by store by store is pulling out and they're going bankrupt. They're not going bankrupt, but they're they're just there's no point going there anymore. So you you think you want to move here, you're trying to figure out if you want to move here. If you have family in Idaho Falls or Rexburg or Pocatello or American Falls, but you don't want to be quite right next to them, I'll tell you what's nice about Twin Falls 
is we get much less snow. This whole southern area right here, we get much from here to the Utah border. We don't get very much snow. And to some people, that's a good thing. To me, that's a good thing. I don't want to be shoveling my driveway. I don't want to be stuck in the road because my car has front wheel drive, whatever, or rear wheel drive. But if you're big on snowboarding and, you know, you want to wear three layers of clothes all year long, um, this is not the place for you. If you go to Pocatello, Idaho Falls, or north of us to uh, Sun Valley, for example, Ketchum, this area up here, these guys get so much snow, it's ridiculous. I had one guy said, I, he sent me pictures, it was up to his waist. He's like, I'm tired of shoveling this. He sold his house in Bellevue which is right here, sold his house in Bellevue and popped down here to Kimberly, which is right in here next to Twin Falls, and uh, sold his house for cash. I think he got an offer the first week it was up, took that cash, bought the entire house down here for cash, and uh, loves it, has mountain views and all that stuff. Um, so Twin Falls is good. It's, it's high desert is what they call it. We have tumbleweeds. We have prairie. But we're mostly dairy, where I think number five in the country for dairy, but don't quote me on that. But there's lots of dairy, lots of cattle, lots of farms, lots of farm workers, lots of farm equipment driving around on the road. And you get stuck behind it, but I'd rather get stuck behind a uh, combine than in bumper to bumper, uh, what they used to call that traffic, um, gridlock, gridlock. That sucks. What else? Um, towns that I sell a lot of homes in and the differences between them. So I will actually go all the way to Mountain Home. My territory goes, at, well, I'm licensed in all of Idaho. I can sell a house anywhere in Idaho, but I typically don't go beyond my comfort zone and means of being able to talk about the area. So I will go all the way to Mountain Home. I've sold homes in Glens Ferry, Hagerman Bliss, and Castleford, and Buell. And then I go north. I'll go north. I, I don't go to Bellevue. I let somebody else, I co-listed it with somebody who was in the MLS system up there because, so as realtors, we're a member of the multi-listing service, which is where we list properties for sale. And that's where you see them on the internet and all the other websites like realtor.com and Zillow and all those guys, they, they try to pull data out of the MLS. Doesn't always work. And that's how sometimes you get listings on Zillow that aren't accurate or truly yet that's not accurate, or it'll say something for sale when it's not or whatever. Our MLS stops um, south of Bellevue. So I cover Fairfield. I've sold houses there. I've sold houses. I've got three listings right now in Richfield. I go to Shoshone all the time, West Magic all the time, Gooding all the time, uh, Wendell south of Gooding there all the time. So I go north quite a ways. I go south. I, I stop around Hollister right here. Um, the, the You see the jackpot border down here, jackpot Nevada. There's not a lot of houses down there. It's the thing. There's not a lot you can sell down there. But I'll, I'll come down to Hollister and, and uh, uh, Ca you know, Castleford's not really far out from, from Filer. And then to the east, uh, I go clear out to, I go, I've been to Malta quite a bit lately, um, Elba, uh, Almo. Um, I go to Declo all the time. There's videos about Declo on here. I go to Paul and Rupert and Burley all the time. So, you know, I, I kind of have this, this is six Southern counties that I cover down here. So if you're interested in coming to a place that has, you know, less average snowfall than uh, off to the east or to the west, um, we have all four seasons. We have lots of dairy and, and fields of grain and they alternate, you know, uh, their crops every, every time because things grow better that way. Um, but if you need to be in a city and have city life, then you probably ought to go to Boise. I don't even know if I say Pocatello or Idaho Falls if you want city life, but I guess you could try it. Um, and then if you are a snow person, you can actually go snow skiing within about 30 to 45 minutes strike from Twin Falls. So just south of Twin Falls are these mountains called the South Mountains. And there is the, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Magic magic well there's a ski resort down here uh, that actually interestingly enough they own the ski resort and magic mountain i think it's magic mountain ski resort um same family owns the haunted swamp 
which is inside Twin Falls, and it's a Halloween thing you go to. They've set up like three acres or whatever with all these haunting things, and you you pay to go through this mile-long circuit of being scared. You, you can volunteer at that every Halloween. If you give up five weekends to volunteer, they'll give you season passes at the ski resort. And so my family with all the kids has done that. And so um, if you want to ski, you can go there. There's a place called Palmerell out here within an hour to the right. You can go up into Sun Valley, which is about an hour and a half, hour and, and 45 minutes. There's skiing in Sun Valley. And sometimes you hear about McCall. McCall is up north of Boise. But if you like the winter sports, you know, we get snow. You can sled, you can snowmobile, you can do all that stuff around here. But if you want to go skiing, it's not that far away. And then uh, if you're a river person, you can't really see it on here, but the Snake River uh, comes all the way through all, all of our area. And so here in Twin Falls, this is where the Perrine Bridge, you always see in the pictures, the Perrine Bridge, because it's it's the last place I'm pretty sure in the country where you can buy a license or a permit to jump off the bridge. And we have, um, we call them bridge jumpers, but they're, uh, what are they called? Not skydivers, um, not parents, I don't know. They strap a parachute on and they jump off and it lasts all of three seconds. And I just can't imagine risking your life for three seconds worth of adrenaline, but they do it on the daily. And uh, so we we have the Perrine Bridge that, that comes across and the Snake River, you can you can drop a kayak in a boat in it. You can go fishing. Um, if you if you drop in down here, uh, Centennial Park right here is one of my favorite places to go. It's actually right behind Costco. So when you come in on the freeway, you're going to come over that bridge because you have to, because that's the only way in town. The only way into Twin is across that bridge, unless you come clear out here where Buell is at. You can take a road that drops you down through the river right here by Clear Lakes Country Club. I think that's it. I mean, no, actually, maybe it's further out. Somewhere out here, it drops you through the river and you come back up, you know, you go down and back up and you get back on the road to Buell and then you come back into town that way. But other than that back route, the only way until you get way out here to the Garden of Eden, uh, the only way into town is across this bridge. So you cross this bridge, you come into town, you hit your first your first major stoplight here on uh, Pole Line, also called 4100. That's another thing about out here. Everything has two names and a lot of the roads just have numbers. So you'd be like, where, where do I need to find you at? Oh, I'm at 1347 East 5200 North. Uh, I don't care for that kind of naming. I like the corner of Elm and Birch or Maine and you know whatever. But if you come here to Costco and you take this little windy road down behind it, it goes down Canyon Springs Road and you can wind and wind and end up down here in the park. And in the park, Let's throw some satellite on it. Oh, lost it. This is Centennial Park down here. So Costco was back over here. You get on this little road, you come down, and, and right about here is a lookout point. Now, this is all, it's all river right here, right? Big green river. But you can start the parking here, which is like three cars can fit right there. And um, and that's where we walk to. I'll show you. My wife and I walk this all the time. It's a great workout. But you drive down this road. It comes down this way and it and it curves back and goes down this way. And then if you go straight right here, it takes you right to Centennial Park. Bam. And, then, and you can have picnics. There's a, a big thing here. You can have a family reunion underneath it or a picnic or whatever. And there's bathrooms and and now there's a company that has their trailer back here in the corner that rents kayaks. You can rent your kayak, AWOL, A-W-O-L. They have a trailer back here, rent your kayaks. But all these little green areas, you can kind of, you know, hang out. You can't camp out overnight without permission. You can with permission, but uh, most people don't. But all this am ample parking, plenty of parking, and it continues. You can park your trailers over here. And so there's a boat launch. Where's the boat launch? Um, there's a boat launch. I can't see it, but there's a boat launch in here somewhere. And then there's the, oh, this is the boat launch. Okay. So it comes down in here and you can launch your boat and then you can pull back out this way and park your trailers here, but off here to the left, we always park over here 
And what you can barely see are the kayak docks. You can come out here and put your kayak in the water and go kayaking, and it makes it real easy to get back out when you come back. You you kind of pull yourself up, and this you know it comes up out of the water, and then it's easy to get out. Um, but this is Centennial Park, and right across is the Country Club, and then the Country Club golf course comes across to this side. That's why you're seeing you know all the golf course over here too. But uh, we like to come park down here if we want to go for a walk and get some exercise. We come and park down here in this area, and then we walk up this road. Up here, turn around, up here, turn around, up here, turn around, and we stop right where that uh, little pullout is where the cars are. If you walk up to there and turn around, it takes about 45 minutes. It's several thousand elevation up, so it's a really good aerobic workout. And... Um, that's one of our favorite things to do. Plus, when you're there, you, you can see the river and it's great views. And one of our biggest waterfalls, not the biggest, because Shoshone Falls is our mini Niagara, but there's a huge waterfall right here that you can't see coming down like right there. Um, you can park. You can kind of see the cars right here. You can park right in here and walk down. And there's a little walkway. You can see it. Can't really see it. But you can walk down in here and walk around kind of underneath where this tree is. And, and you can stand on the backside of this huge waterfall. And it's so cool. And it's landing not too far from you. So, I mean, you can see the whole thing. And you can actually walk all the way around the ledge behind the waterfall and come back out on this side or drop down and take this trail. But, but there's a bajillion trails over here, um, which is one of the things we're good for. If you want to be outside and you want to hike and you want to bike and you want to do trails and all that stuff, uh, the whole Magic Valley area is wonderful for that. Um, so that's one of the main things I was showing about Twin Falls and things to do. Let's see, where did, oh, I'm just getting out of layers. That's what it was. So back to kind of the overall view. Um, if you want to be further outside of town, if you're like, I'm sick of California or I'm sick of the city I'm in or whatever, uh, and you want to come here and you don't quite want to be in town, you want some breathing room, any of these towns outside of Twin uh, would suffice. And Burley is like a mini Twin. I think, you know, if Twin's at 80,000, Burley's probably at 50 or 60. You can Google the numbers. Burley is, is similar to Twin, but not as big. So, uh, but they're about an hour apart. So Twin being centrally located to everything is the good middle point. If you want to go an hour more towards Idaho Falls, you can do Burley. And if you want to be in that general zone, but not in town, then pick Declo, Rupert, Paul, Murtaugh, Albion. Uh, you want to see a neat little town, go to Albion. That's where the ghost, the ghost house is. Uh, haunted uh, school from, I don't know, the 1910s. Um, Minidoka and, and you know, north of town, if you want to be closer to the Sun Valley skiing and all that, uh, Dietrich, Shoshone, Richfield, West Magic, Gooding, these are all good choices uh, for being a little bit further north. Uh, and then, you know, snug right up next to Twin is Jerome, but it's across the bridge. So when you talk about, like I had somebody call me just the other day and said, I want to move there. I've got a towing truck company. I want to be centrally located in Twin so I can service the most amount of cars that I can do. So they said, let's do Buell and let's do Filer and let's do Kimberly. And I said, well, do you want Jerome? And they said, I don't know, do I? And I said, well, it's across the bridge, which isn't a big deal, but it's just that much more time. You know, if you live out on the north side of Jerome, you got to go through Jerome, over the bridge, and then you get in the twin. And if you got a south twin call, it could take you, you know, 45 minutes or whatever. But any one of these tiny towns outside of Twin Falls are going to give you that small town feel. You're going to have plenty of breathing room. You could buy houses with. Uh, an acre on them, and uh, how long have I been going here? Too long. Zoom does not show time frames. At least I don't know where it's at. So I guess maybe I could wrap it up with that. Um, this is I've never shown it from a map perspective. Um, I've always said here's something to do and here's something to do, and you can go do that. But this is giving you kind of the broad overview. Um, we do have an airport in Twin Falls, uh, but it only flies to Salt Lake City. So it's a jumper. You, you'd fly from Twin to Salt, and then you'd catch that to anywhere. Uh, they did add a third flight now, which is big, exciting news here, because you either had to catch the 6 a.m. flight or uh, to go out and come home on the 11.30 p.m. flight. 
now there's a midday, like right at one o'clock. So it's very exciting. Now we can, we can actually hop on the plane and go to Salt Lake City or whatever for, for breakfast or lunch and then come back. And anyway, uh, what else would you want to know coming here? Um, that's all I can think of. So if you have any questions about what I've shown you, put them in the comment below and I'll answer them. But um, I'd be okay with any of these. Um, I, I think I'm happy right here in Filer because I'm kind of right in the center of all of it. I can go, I can go anywhere and be anywhere in a matter of hours. And I have an airport and uh, I'm outside of town and I got peace and quiet and I can walk to the corner store for a gallon of milk if I want. I don't have to drive a half hour to hit a Walmart. Uh, hope that helps. All right, let's see what that does. Oh, I'm still recording. 